Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Good morning, folks on Facebook and out on the radio. We appreciate you so much for joining in with us. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hymn number 219, if you need it, then we're going to go right into 220 after that. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. glad I'm not the same, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Pastor. Thank you. I try to read a verse from the book of Psalm, starting our message every day or it's worship time. Psalm 119, chapter 119, verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and they that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly and let's open in prayer. Almighty God, we praise you and thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Father. You're so gracious, so kind. Your mercies are wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You feed us. You care for us. You help us through sickness, through hardship. And so that's the reason we can come together and we can worship you in spirit and in truth and we can praise you for all your goodness. We thank you for it all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Ah, you can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, thank you. That's really good. Uh, do we have any visitors? We have some returnees. We say welcome. All those that are turning, tuning in on Facebook, thank you for being with us. We hope that you will receive something from this worship time and service. We thank you for it all. I'm going to turn it back over to Jim now. Thank you, Pastor. Just a few announcements this morning, and then I also have a thank you card to read. Thanks so much. The phrase is simple and the words are few, but behind them is a whole lot of appreciation. I like that little thing there. East Bristol Baptist, thank you for the lovely Bible for my graduation. It means a lot to know that you are all wishing me well on my next adventure. Thanks again for your generosity. God bless Cameron Renee Roberts. There you are. <laughs> I was looking in the wrong direction. And we do wish you well. We'll be praying for you. As Yes. Okay, yeah. In case you didn't hear that, Bonnie thanks you, church, for the fruit basket that you sent her uh, while she was in the hospital. So thanks uh, very generous church, and we appreciate you so much. 
All right, uh, in your bulletin you'll see our uh, r reminder that our church address has changed, 1090 Pendergrass Road. I'll probably keep harping on that for a month or so so we get it drilled in our head. <laughs> 1090 Pendergrass Road. Uh, Children's Church starts next Sunday, so mark your calendars. Folks on Facebook that are home with your children, uh, make sure you're here next week at 11 o'clock. We're going to be, the kids will be over in the Hope Center, and uh, we'll be here in the sanctuary. The adults will be all at the same time, 11 o'clock, okay? Uh, so bring the kiddos. We'll be glad to see everyone back next week. Uh, shoebox, uh, that's not a typo there, like I thought it was. <laughs> I called Sharon this morning. I said, Sharon, you changed them up, but the items haven't changed. But we we didn't get uh, very many of those, so we're going to let that stretch out for about another month there just so we get a good stock of that. So for the month of June, we're going to continue to take socks, T-shirts, underwear, flip-flops, and sandals and make sure that those are ages up to 12 and that they will, of course, fit into a shoebox. Bookcase in the Joy Hall, remember that. There's several good books out there, so you can go check those out. Uh, if you have any questions or requests, see Bonnie or Linda for about that. And then the deacons meeting will be this coming Tuesday, June the 1st at 6.30. So deacons, uh, make note of that, please, and I'll send out uh, the column all for that. All right. Let's take our hymn books again. Turn to hymn number 408. Hymn number 408. How firm a foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said to you for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, oh, be not dismayed. pathway shall lie my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply the flame shall not hurt thee I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine the soul that on Jesus hath lain for repose. I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell, should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Amen. It's good to hear those voices out there this morning. Now let's continue with that good gospel singing. Tommy and Lisa.
through the lonesome valley as you journey on life's road. Lay your burdens at the Savior's feet. Lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus. Lay your burdens at His feet. Lay Promises and doubt him never, he's a sure and precious friend. Let his will be gladly praise him ever, lay your burdens at his feet. Lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus, lay your burdens at his feet lay your days at the Savior's your burdens at the feet of Jesus lay your burdens at his feet lay your days at the Savior's your burdens at the feet of Jesus lay your burdens at his feet Blood 
of Jesus that brings victory to me. And it's still the blood that saves from sin. It's still the blood that cleanses within from the heart. the depths of the sea, it's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. From the highest star in heaven to the depths of the sea, it's still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. Ain't that the truth? Amen. We are getting ready to uh, enjoy ourselves tomorrow. People get off from work, take a day off, enjoy family and friends and life. But we want to uh, recognize Memorial Day. If we could only, if we could only grasp the feelings of all those moms and dads that sent boys off to war, and they come back in body bags or whatever, it would break our heart. It really would. So we just want we want to recognize each and every one. We have some here that served in military, so we say thank you because of your service. Some were enlisted. Some of them were, I was drafted. Others were drafted. But I just thank God. He brought us back. But a lot of those guys, they didn't make it back. So we just want to the parents, all those that have been through that, we just say thank you. I think the recognition is due in this situation. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to uh, First Peter. I've been going through a, a series on First Peter. Turn to chapter 4, and we'll start reading in verse 12 down to 19. That's in First Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 12. And there the Bible says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you, and their part he is evil, he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's affairs. Yet if any man suffer as Christian, let him not be ashamed. Let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first began, began at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God be? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore let... Them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And let's pray. Almighty God, <clears throat> as we look at this scripture, Lord, it's speaking right to our hearts. Each and every one of us need to ponder this just to see what God is saying to us. If we know Jesus Christ, we're Christians, Father. And that was brought about through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on that cross for our sins. So I pray, Lord, just help us to really ponder on this and to be able to look into it and know that we may have to suffer for Jesus, but he's got glory that will be awaiting for the Christian because of that suffering, because as he suffered, so should we be willing to suffer. Thank you for this day and all that's here. We praise you and we love you. And it's all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Now, the, the Apostle Peter, you know, he started out pretty rough. Fisherman, probably kind of bullish, all like that. Then he met Jesus. What about yourself? What about myself? What was your life like before you met Jesus? But afterwards, when that Holy Spirit came into your heart, what was that like? I sat in the parking lot this morning. A homeless man come up. And I was trying to, uh, I was trying to lead him to the Lord, but he he was off key. But I did all that I could. Even come in, and got him a couple of gospel tracks. Now that's what Jesus means to us. But what does it mean to the world? Now Peter knew because he had suffered. He was one that could write this scripture down as God gave him direction. And he could understand somewhat about the suffering. We in the United States, do we know anything about suffering? We know about uh, sickness and some things like that. But what about suffering for our faith? What about suffering for Jesus Christ? Would we be willing? Would we say, Lord, I know you're in control. And if you allow this to come upon me, then so be it. I want to stand firm on that holy name of Jesus Christ. That's what he's calling us to do. So let me ask you a question. Can we rejoice in suffering? If we have the right connection with God through Jesus Christ, then we can rejoice. We can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what God is calling us all to do. Stand firm. Stand ready. March on in the name of the Lord. And don't let the world pull us aside one way or the other. Don't let those that would try to trip us up, pull us down, affect us. But allow God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, let them, the three in one, let them form inside of us a willingness to stand up for Jesus Christ. It's a must for the Christian. Because are we worthy? If he suffered so much, are we worthy if we will not stand on what he has asked us to do? What is our salvation worth? You have to take that into consideration. It's worth everything. It's worth all this world. I don't care what we can amass in wealth in this world. It cannot even touch the fact of our salvation and our promise to be in heaven with the Almighty God. But we don't know what will happen between this day and that day that we're taking out. One thing I'd like to say, be willing. Be willing, be ready, be willing, and expect it because... The Bible tells us that uh, all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It may come in many different forms, but we have to be willing to suffer if he allows it. But think about this. When we think I'm, I'm going to suffer, and I've, I've got people that persecute me. I've got people that just don't like me because I'm a Christian. Stand firm. Dear Christian, Dan, stand firm. Because we have so much scripture in there that tells us about these things. I love that in Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. He's on our side. He's within us, Christian. He is the one that will carry us through this. If he calls on us to die for faith like Jesus did. Oh, what's your next minute going to look like? In the presence of Jesus Christ. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. That speaks to all of us. That speaks to every one of us. Hardships may come. A downturn in maybe our jobs or whatever. But stand firm. I'll say this. In a personal way. He's never let me down. 
I've had times it's almost like I wring my hands, Lord, where are you? He's right where he always was. He allows us to go through hard times to keep our attention on him. Because if we follow the world, our eyes are not on Jesus. They're on what it can give me, what I can draw from him. So we have to keep our eyes on him. We have to look to him. Just let me ask you a question. Have you been through some hard times? I think for a Christian to live in a, a life in this world, he's going to see some hard, hard times. You know, and we could all tell a story about what things happened to me in the past or yourself. But let me tell you what hard times, and you've heard me say this before. Hard times will bring your attention, your focus on God. Make it real. It'll make it seem like he kept me. He kept me from the hard things he provided. He brought me into a stronger understanding of what God is really all about. You don't get that on this world. You don't get it because it's not there. But you go to God's Word, and you're going to see so many in there suffered. A lot of those psalms, psalms David wrote, they were due to his suffering because he saw that God was good. He saw that God would provide in God's time. That's where we, so many, get tripped up. In his time, we even sing that song, in his time, he'll make all things better in his time. Well, he didn't answer my prayer that I prayed day before yesterday, and I'm just, I've heard people say, I'm mad at God. Goodness. He's an awful big God to be mad at, isn't he? I think we need to thank him for all the good that we do have. Do we expect the best in life? Do we really look to, uh, to the world like, give me what I deserve? What do we deserve? We deserve only the promises that a Christian receives from the Word of God. He'd never leave nor forsake. He always will be with us. But we have to wait on him, trust him, and receive from him. And not look to the world for the answers. There's not, there's not true answers out there, folks. Because our lifespan is just a short time. Philippians 1.29 For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. How do we handle that when suffering comes our way? I don't believe you can live as a Christian without some suffering to come to you because it's a, it's a growth pattern that God gives. I go through hard times, but oh, look what it brought me. I can, I can, uh, I can tell you about a time in my life. I was going along, working every day. Things were good all of a sudden. It all just stopped. Can I tell you that that was the most precious time of my life right there? Because the money flow stopped. Hardship seemed to rush in. It put a lot of worry, which I shouldn't have done. But God has got a training program. And he has got a training program fit perfectly for your life and for my life. Let that train and go through that God can grow you and make you a stronger Christian or maybe a Christian if you're not. He's God, and he looks for the best. The bottom can fall out. That's just the way the world is. We don't need to fight it, but we need to receive his training. And he's done promise, Christian, he'd never leave for, nor forsake us. You can't walk out the doors of this church saying, I don't know where God went. I thought he was in there in the sanctuary, but now where is he? He's right there. You get in a car, he's right there with you. Might be a wise thing, let him drive, might he? But anyway, God, he's there for the Christian. You may not see him, but if you'll walk with him, You'll feel his presence. 
you'll feel that love and concern. You'll see all of that because he does love. He wants the best for you, for me, for our families. That's what he wants. But we have to work with him. I feel sorry for the person that says I'm a Christian. But they go about trying to make their own life or life even of others. That is not of God. You think the devil, he'll do everything he can to tear a Christian down. He'll use whatever means he has to because he's anti-God. He hates God. He hates the church. He hates the Christian. But God says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world, the devil gives. But he wants us to have that peace. We can have that. It's available. It can just reach out and take hold of it. Trust in him. Receive from him. You have bad days? I'm sure we could all sit here and say, oh, let me tell you about a day a while back or this week or yesterday maybe. Nothing went right. Just hold on. Hold tight. God hadn't left you. And he's looking for a better manner in your life. And it's called faith and trust. That's what it's all about. If you don't trust him, you're on your own. If you do trust him, he's right there. How many prayers has he answered for you all this week? If you pray, he'll answer your prayers. For the lost, Oh, God, forgive me, for I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me from my sin. Does it get any better than that? It can't, because you're talking about eternity here. So many people live for the moment. They think this life will just go on and on. But I got news for them. It will not. It cannot, because that's not the way God designed it. Lay up your treasures in heaven. That's what he commands us to do. Treasure, what is our treasure? It's not the dollar bill now. The treasure is what I have given unto God of myself. It's because I have set myself to serve God and to reach other souls for Christ. I think the church needs to realize that God intends that you and myself would be soul winners. The Old Testament says, he that wins the souls is wise. And you know why I think he says that? Because you will see that again. You get to heaven. Wow, what would it be like someone walk up to you and said, oh, I thank you so much. Do you share Jesus with me? I prayed to receive him. Now look where I am. In the presence of Jesus Christ. What's the opposite of that? Burning in that lake of fire? Folks, I don't know why anyone would even allow the thought to come in. I'm going to live my life the way I want it. I don't care who says what or whatever. But where will that lead? It won't lead to the very presence of Jesus. If we're saved, that spiritual connection, with Jesus Christ. That is our connection. That is that spirit lives within. How often that spirit speak to you? I know he speaks to me many times, even in a day. He brings maybe someone across my path, and he says to me, talk to that person. When God says move, Christian, move. Don't stand still. Move. It's not a hard thing just to tell someone about what uh, God has done for you. That's not hard. That's what he wants from us, though. Here's the call to the Christian. People need to see Christ in you. Your mannerism speaks a lot. We go to a restaurant, do we pray? That's a testimony. Let people see that. Oh, goodness. We don't need to be ashamed 
of Jesus Christ. We don't need to be ashamed of God the Father because we want to be in heaven with the triune God, enjoying heaven, all the goodness. And we haven't even been told of all the goodness that will be up there. But we have to trust him down here. Your life, my life is built on the word of God and the promises of God and the leading of the spirit of God. Now that spirit, if he's indwelling us, he will speak to us. He'll speak into your heart. You'll feel that pressure from God the Father because of what he wants you to do. No, you're not you're going not going to be uh loved by everyone. But that doesn't matter. See, that takes us right back to the suffering of Jesus Christ. Look what he went through. They beat him. They crucified him. They tore they tore him up bad. Couldn't even recognize him. That is hate. That's the hate of the devil. You know what God designed for a church? That we be at peace with one another. That we love one another. That we don't try to use one another. That we walk in faith in Jesus Christ. We'll do that. He can use us. I think every Christian ought to have someone that you could say, I showed this person from the Scripture what God will do for them. And they prayed and received Jesus. It might be a deathbed. I've had death. It might be just an occasion. God will put someone across our path that we might say, let me tell you about Jesus. Church, I believe God put us in this very place, in this very age, to win souls for Christ. But we have to be willing. We have to receive what he wants us to do. And show the world we're Christians. Is that, do we have the faith? Do we have what it takes to stand up and say, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. You'll get persecuted for it. You'll be talked about. That doesn't matter. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I know what Paul said in Romans, I believe it's chapter 1. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's for the, that's for the, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, unbelievers. It's for everyone. What do you have to do to, to uh, get included in God's plan? All you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need Jesus. And if you'll ask him to, just instantly, just like that, he'll come into your heart and he'll say, is that not what we'll be looking back from eternity in, say, oh, I'm, I'm so glad that someone told me that day about Jesus. But you have, <clears throat> you have to obey him, you have to receive, and you have to go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, Christians are, are different from unbelievers. This kind, different kind of life needs to produce a different kind of lifestyle. We can't live like the world now. We can't, we can't be a, a party to anything that's not of God. We need to be exactly what God has made us into being. I found this, and I thought it was is very good in what we're studying here. Much of what goes on in the world depends on lies, pride, pleasure, and the desire to get more. Hey, I've got enough. Have you got enough? I've got enough because God is the one who provides my needs each and every day. I think if I want more than what he'll give, 
I'm greedy. I'm full of greed. I want more. I'll take from others to get it. A dedicated Christian builds on his life on truth, humility, holiness, and the desire to glorify God. Hey, Christian, Christ is our solid rock. We don't need anything else. He fed me t- today, and hopefully with my family, he'll feed us all together after this service. Does it get any better than that? <laughs> Here's a good thought. The world does not persecute religious people, but it does persecute righteous people. Right with God. Believe in what God has said. That's what he wants. What will it be with us? What does he want from us? Tell the world Jesus saved. Tell the world that there's a better way than what you see all out and about. Tell the world about your Lord and Savior. If you'll do that, He'll bless you. Do you want God's blessing? You know where I think it starts? Blessing God. And I believe He'll return and bless you. But if you have to be a part of whatever that don't bless God, what can you look for? I don't know if I ever told you this, but... uh, Where he used to live, this young man lived up over the railroad track from me. He drank, he did drugs, he did all these things. And after all that, I saw him go to the mailbox one day with his hands under his... I guess he was waiting for a check. I would hope that was salvation. But what I'm saying is, trust God, walk with God, follow him, And you'll have a right to ask him, Lord, please answer my prayers. I'm in need. I need your help. And if we'll do that, he will bless. Now, all those tuning in on Facebook, I don't know the condition of your heart, but God does. You know what he wants above all things for your life? And that is to know Jesus Christ. If you will pray and ask him to, he'll save your soul. And I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer. So I want all heads bowed, our people, people listening on the radio also, just bow your heads and let me lead in the sinner's prayer. Be serious about this too. You pray to God, Lord, I know the Bible tells me that I'm a lost person because I feel that conviction in my heart. And Lord, right now, I confess my sin to Jesus. Come into my heart and save me from my sin that I might live a life that's pleasing unto you and that I can look for that home in heaven for eternity. And let me go ahead and say, and you pray that prayer in Jesus' name. And if you ask him to, Jesus saved you right now. You don't ever have to doubt him again. But you can thank him what he has done and what he will do for your life and in your life that you can touch other people and let's close in a word of prayer almighty god father in heaven we thank you thank you for jesus and even though he suffered lord he's been so good so kind to me my family our church lord and i just ask and pray that your mighty hand just work through each and every one, Lord. Oh, Lord, what more can we ask of you than for salvation? But I think our job needs to be tell the world about Jesus and that we might lead others to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Help us in that, Lord, I pray. Thank you for this service, this time, Lord, and we praise you and thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hymn number 482, Jesus is Calling. Jesus is tenderly calling you home, calling today, calling today. Why from the sunshine of love will you roam? 
farther and farther away, calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling today. Let me say this, this altar is always open. It's open to whoever wants to deal with Jesus in their heart. If you need to speak to myself. But do you know and have assurance that you're saved? It may be that God has given one more time. Because we don't know what even the next hour will bring. But don't walk out these doors without Jesus. And those on Facebook, I hope and pray that many of you would have prayed that prayer asking him into your heart he will save and he does it in love and concern and care for all whosoever will so you deal with him right now jesus is calling the weary to rest calling today calling today bring him your burden and you shall be blessed he will not turn you away, calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling today. Jesus is pleading, oh, listen to his voice, hear him today. Hear him today, they who believe on his name shall rejoice, quickly arise and away, calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling today. Lord God, I pray today, through this message, not of myself, but of what you have given, that there's a new creature in Christ out there, maybe in this service this morning. But I just pray, Lord, touch hearts, Lord. It's only, it takes the Holy Spirit working in our heart. It's not something we can do ourselves. We're only representatives of Almighty God. Touch hearts, I pray. We'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did everyone get a communion cup that wanted to be a part of it? Everyone? Okay. We're back on schedule on our uh, communion every fifth Sunday, so today is that day. If you feel led by God, you be a part of that. Because it's it's given to us. Everyone get it? Okay. I want to look at First Corinthians chapter eleven. First of all, I want to start reading in verse twenty six. This is a warning. I think it needs to be included in this, but uh first Corinthians chapter eleven. Verse 26, as often as you eat this cup, bread, and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the blood and body of the Lord. But let every man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the body, the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. You know what? And I've taught my kids this. Before you take communion, you do business with God. If you have sins to confess, do that. Because he wants, wants us to come to this table with clear hearts, trusting him. And then we partake. 
So I'll, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to give us just, just a minute. Let's all bow our heads. If you need to do business with God, take care of that now, okay? Okay, let's together. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. Here the Apostle Paul said, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And I'll ask Brother Tommy to pray for the bread. Everyone take their bread out of your pack there and uh, we'll partake together. Everyone got their bread out? Let's partake together. Verse 25, he says, After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of them, of me. I was Brother Booth. Bless the drink. Everyone got their cup open? Let's partake together. We usually sing, let's be the tie that binds, but let's go through our prayer list first, and we will close with that song, okay? 